Okay, today we are going to discuss about how to write, how to enhance our writing. Uh, chapter number six, which is titled Good Style, uh, Good Style by um, Justin Jobel in his book Writing for Computer Science. So what is important here is when you write, you write something nicely, clearly, something unambiguous, things people can follow carefully, right? It's not about writing long sentences, broad sentences that people cannot understand. Don't write something too long that the reader gets lost, okay? So be clear. So how to improve your writing? Let's look at some of the facts. You can write, which is something kind of a poetry. Right? It looks nice, looks eloquent. You can write it. You can write something more of a, uh, you know, flowery type, meaning like some business type of writing. You want to make some business talk, business writing, you can do it like an advertisement. But here, when you talk about style, we are not talking about grammar. No grammar business here. Grammar should be correct. You cannot write something which is grammatically wrong and say this is a style. No. Style is not about grammar. Style is about how I communicate to the reader. How I make things clear to the reader. Okay? So, grammar is different. For sure, you have to follow grammar rules, but you have to write it plain, straightforward, clear. It should be accurate. In poetry, sometimes we overdo. We make things look big, okay? Look colorful. No such thing should be there when you write scientific writing. And if you write, make sure there is not many or there is very little spelling mistakes. Because humans make mistakes, I understand. But you cannot have too many mistakes. Nowadays, you have software available inside Microsoft Word, okay, which can check the spell check. You can check the spelling. You can check few things. And your writing should be clear, should not be ambiguous, should be unambiguous, okay? Should be correct, should be easy to understand. Direct to the point. Don't just round, round, round. So you can write things like plain text. You can use poetic style. You can use scientific style. So there are many ways of writing, but here we are talking about plain style, which you are conveying to your reader. So in any scientific writing, what you do is this, you don't make it like a poet, and it's not like it will be dull, no, it's not dull, it is clean, it is smooth, and I'm telling what I, inter what I want the reader to understand, I want the reader to understand, not me as the author to understand. The reader should be able to understand. Also, if I write something not organized properly, you know, everything is mixed from introduction to related chapter and whatever, I mix around, it will be very difficult for the reader to understand. Okay? So be careful when you write. So let us start with a few points. Here. When you write first time, you write whatever you know. So what you do is, is you start writing, when you do your research itself, from the starting stage, you start writing. And when you write initially, you will write lots of things. Maybe 10 lines, 20 lines for something. At the end, after 2, 3, 4 isolation, you will see you will end up in only 3 lines. The remaining lines, you will remove them. You will omit them. You will remove them because they are not necessary. So the point is, every word, every sentence I write, should be necessary in my text. Don't make it bluff, okay? Put it to the point. And then you don't like, you don't just padding, you know, padding, just adding words, words, words to make it look like 200 words, 2000 words, like this, no. And don't make your sentence too long. Long sentences are less readable. It is difficult to read them. <clears throat> One important point to note, nobody is born as a very good writer, okay? How you claim somebody as a good writer? Someone who writes and rewrites, who visits the writing regularly and he updates, updates, updates. So when I write the very first time, I am sure it is not in good shape. But I will still write. Why I need something to be clearly written? Once something is written, I get my ideas more established. So you have to write initially. Then you frequently revise it. You go down to it, read it again, correct it again, enhance it. Don't delete the old written version. Keep it. 
and keep like next version, next version, next version. Okay. You can use these versions even on the Google Docs. We can use a Google Doc where you create a Google Doc, you start typing, then you go next version, you go next version. It will show you the old version plus the new version, what is the difference. Okay. So this is important. So when somebody reviews your paper, after you get the review, read the review carefully. Okay. And then think how to make sure, right, I convey the message correctly to the reader. Think like this. Don't think the opposite. Don't think, oh, he did not read correctly. He is wrong. No. Don't go with the ego. Right? Always think, how can I make it in such a way the reader understands it the way I want him to understand? I put it rightly. Okay? So why the reader went away from what should be understood? So enhance your writing in such a way that, and make sure you don't boost off, you don't show off that this is best work in the world, nobody has done like this, such thing. Here is an example. If you read this paragraph, okay, if you read it, I'm going to read part of it, not every line of it, right? It is exactly from the book. It's verbatim from the book. I did not modify anything. The volume of information has been rapidly increasing in the past few decades, while computer technology has played a significant role in encouraging the information growth, the latter had also had a great impact on the evolution of computer technology in processing data throughout the years. Two sentences I have read, approximately five lines. Is there anything new? These are historical information. If I remove them, is it going to change my abstract or change my write-up? Not really. Reading further, you can see much information is in textual format. Okay? If I say much information is textual, I'm taking a sentence which is like this. Much information is in textual format. If I change this, much information is textual. Is that a difference? The understanding is the same. But that means I remove two words. In is gone. Format is removed. So I am reducing the number of words but still keeping my information here. Right? And I'm reduced. This unstructured style of data. So if I say this unstructured data, style of data, data, unstructured data, unstructured style of data, same thing, right? In contrast to the old structured record format data, why should I say how is it different from the old one? I can say cannot be made, managed properly by the traditional database models, right? So I can simplify things. Furthermore, since so much information is available, this world everybody knows, so much information is available. So you can say, furthermore, storage and indexing are not the only problems. So here in this text, if you remove all the italics here, you will get to two, three lines or five lines maybe maximum, and yet the message will be the same. So don't write things which are not necessary. That's all. Take another example. Which stream interpretation requires external description of stored structures. Stored descriptions are encoded, not external. Looks very small sentence. But is it clear to me what he is trying, trying to tell you? Not clear. I don't understand what he is trying to tell. So if you rechange it, if you enhance it, interpretation of bit streams requires external information such as this. So here I am giving such as this like an example kind of. To make things more clear. Such descriptions are themselves data and if stored with a bit stream become part of it so that further information, external information is not required. So this is more clear. So sometimes just because you want to cut down the sentence doesn't mean you remove everything and it becomes too difficult to understand. Okay. So you need to have a balance. When you write, you are writing something accurate, you are writing something clear, objective, based, accurately. You are not writing something like, you know, poetry, something like entertainment. It's not for entertainment. The thesis or the paper is not entertainment. It should be an accurate, clear cut information, should not be ambiguous. It should be unambiguous, right? So, keep it direct, straight to the point. Here are some basic rules to follow. Have one idea per sentence or a paragraph. In one paragraph, we should have one single idea. Don't mix too many things in one single paragraph. Okay? And keep it logically organized. Chapter, this, part, this, this paragraph, next paragraph. 
right? And use small words. Don't make it like to look very complicated, okay? Omit something unnecessary. Anything that is not needed, we remove it. And don't make things look like big things. Excessive words, buzzwords. Don't do this, right? And if you are writing something and you are specifically not disclosing some information because the, the number of pages, there is a limitation on number of pages of paper. You cannot go beyond eight paper pages, for example. Then if you are removing something, explain, write it due to the scope of the paper or due to the limitation, I'm going to do this. And people who need it can read it in the supplementary material or maybe in uh, somewhere else, provide some direction, okay? And if you want to break these rules, you can, but you should have a reason why you want to break it. Okay, these are kind of guidelines, not real rules that you need to follow strictly. They are guidelines for you to go through. So, if you have a long word, long sentence, and you really need it, go ahead, use it. Because you really need it. There's nothing I can do. Alright? And don't do over qualifying like it is explaining and supporting a client so much that it ruins. So if you explain too much, you make it look very big, people get lost. The reader gets lost. Here is an example. The results show that for the given data, less memory is likely to be required by the new structure, depending upon the magnitude of the numbers to be stored and the access pattern. Okay? So you said, my job, my new approach, is going to use less memory, depending on the size of the data, size of or the way you store the data. You said this. But then, you have not made things more clear to me. Okay, what is the impact of the data? These things you did not. So here is the result. Here is the way to write. The results show that less memory was required by the new structure. So I need less memory. Whether this result hold for other data sets depends on the magnitude of the number and the access pattern. But we expect, here he is saying, we expect the new structure will usually require less memory than the old. This is my expectation. Okay? I am not changing an expectation into a fact. I have not tested it. I have not verified it. I have not validated it. I cannot just make statement, it's the best in the world. Okay? Don't over qualify. Right. How about using we, I, active voice, passive voice, this is an area of debate. Some people say use active. Some people say no, use passive. Okay? So it depends. But always keep in mind, don't use slang words. Words which are used in some community, but not standard. Don't use them. And don't make your paper look like artistic art or it's like a sales kind of uh, document. No, you're not doing business here. Okay? Make it more clear. Here's an example. Look, it says, the system should be developed with the end users clearly in view. It must therefore run something from simplicity to sophistication. From the first tentative familiarity steps, the continued scrutiny and rigorous analysis until by um, some alchemical process, it should be transmuted into specifications. Well, I understand, but what did you do? You are saying many things. This should be done, that should be done, that should be like this. But what did you do? Clearly, what you did. So there is another way of writing. Again, this is not a good way. You can see. We have already seen in our consideration of what is that the usual simplified assumptions lead to, lead inoxorably to a representation that is desirable because the solution is always desirable. But repugnant because it is false. And we have presented what should be assumptions whose nature is not susceptible, susceptible to easy analysis but are the only tenable alternative to ignorance. So if you look at like this, looks like kind of they are selling something. They are making it, oh, I need to do this. I've done this. Land, that. It looks like huge, okay? It looks like very big, but this is not what we need. What we have to write is pretty simple. We have seen that the usual assumptions lead to a tractable model. But, usual assumptions give me something. But, this model is only a poor representation of the real behavior. Now I made it clear. Problem is clear. What is the solution? We therefore propose richer assumptions, which are, however, difficult to analyze. So he put two things. We come up with uh, richer assumptions, good assumptions, but it is difficult to analyze. Okay? So he, are, he is saying what is the limitation of his plan as well. 
Then he is saying, now we consider whether there is a way in which our assumptions can be usually applied. So he is going to study whether he can make his richer assumptions to be somehow applied properly. Okay. This is key. Right. So another example. You can say as each value is passed to the server, the heart of the server, it is checked to see whether it is up in the appropriate range. This is like writing a manual. I send this data then it did something, you get the result. We are not writing a manual. Paper is not a manual. A thesis is not a manual. Okay. So you have to write each value passed to the server is checked to see whether it is appropriate or not. Whether it is an appropriate range. So not like this. The first one, I'm trying to say when I pass it there, I do something, I get there. This is like a manual, step by step manual. But instead, you say like each value, pass to the server, is checked to see whether it is appropriate, whether it is an appropriate range. Okay? Next, sometimes the local network starts completely for a few seconds. This is what we call the Grimoire effect. Discovered splendidly during an experiment to measure the impact of server configuration on network traffic. So he is saying that, look, I found out something called green world effect. I found out something. But how did you find it? When did you find it? What is the, what is the solution of it? When you find it, what did you do next? So you have to write, sometimes local network stall for a few seconds. We first notice this effect during an experimental measurement. We first found out, we first noticed it during some experiment of the impact of server configuration on network traffic. And it, it is due to configuration of the server on the network. He did not say what he did as such. It will be there in the next paragraph. Okay. But in this paragraph, he is saying what he found. Then you can see here, uh, next another paragraph here. To improve the chance of a catch sheet, almost a complete record was necessary to the data structure routine. But no run with the new code showed any improvement. Too long sentence. Very long. There is no comma, there is no punctuation. Makes my life difficult to understand. With the cache may also be too small, may, may have been too small, but more likely the problem was the operating system and infection prefetch getting the curse dirty. All too long. We don't write like this. Also. I'm pretty sure when you start writing, you might end up writing like this. Initial time. That when you enhance, enhance, you can. Okay? So this is why I put the exact example from the book as it is. Because by checking it many times, you will know what to do, what not to do. Okay? You will get to know the business. Then, sometimes you might need to give some example for clarification. To make things more clear. For example, blah, blah. blah. Okay? So in a semi-state model, each symbol has an associate probability representing its likelihood of occurrence. For example, if the symbols are characters in text, then a common character such as E might have an associate probability of so much. So, give an example. Okay. You can give more examples. So, here, for example, large document collections such as this can be managed with the same technique. Special cases such as an empty set need to be handled separately. So, sometimes you need to elaborate. You write a procedure. But this procedure might apply to something, might not apply to something else. Right? Then you make it clear. Okay. For some special case, I need to handle them separately. Because this does not work for special cases. Where I have some empty set. Right? And you can say, algorithms that involve bit manipulation cannot be efficiently implemented in these languages. I can give an example. Okay? And when you write your paper, Keep in mind, you have to motivate the reader. The reader should be motivated, correct? You give introduction, you write something, and that should be a flow. You link one thing to the next one. You link them, okay? Together, these results show that the hypothesis holds for linear coefficient. So he's saying hypothesis is good for linear coefficient, okay? That means it's not good for non-linear. We don't know. He didn't say anything. He only said good for linear. The difficulty is presented by nonlinear or considered in the next section. So, in the next part of the paper, I'm writing what is the problem with nonlinear? Okay, what is the issue I face with nonlinear? They link. You should have linking. And in the introduction, 
you can outline the result. You don't need to say inner detail of the result, but outline. And may include a list of parts of the paper, but these measures are by themselves, okay? These measures are by themselves are not sufficient. So, if I just read the introduction, I will not know the result 100%. I will not know it carefully. I only know general outcome, okay? So, when you can do like this. In a paper, when I start reading, there are lots of repetitions in a paper. Why? Initially in the abstract, I say I got this result. In the introduction, I also say, right? When you go down, there is a result section much deeper. So what is happening here? You are telling the reader, what are you going to say? I am going to say this. Then you say what you want to say. You say. Then, tell the reader that you have said this. Also tell him, look, I have told you. So you have to do three things. What do you want to say? Then say, then tell him, look, I have told you. Right? So he is in flow, he is following you. Sometimes, you might need to give some definition. Some definition needed because you, there might be one terminology defined by many people in different ways. Possible. So you need to have some terminology properly given. And when you give terminology, don't just put the terminology definition and leave it. No. Say, why is this terminology important for my research? Why is it interesting for me? Why I need it? How is it related to my research? Make it clear, right? And you have to say, if you put anything, make it clear how it is related. The relationship is important. Remember, you know things better than the reader because you are the author of the paper. You are the one who did the research. But don't include something called common knowledge. I told you what is common knowledge already. When you start your research, at that time you know something. Those things are common knowledge. Everybody should know, okay? Don't write them here. So clearly, tell the author, tell the reader, right? You are te telling him something and what he has to follow. What is to follow next? Okay, linking them. Decide what you want to teach the reader and plan the content of the paper. Plan it from what you want to teach the reader. So motivate the writing, okay? Don't motivate something not relevant. And there is something called balance. What do you mean by balance here? Sometimes people write paper. Introduction is too long, related work is very small, not, not like this. You should have a balance. Sometimes maybe I need to reduce the proof. I don't give the proof of a theorem, okay, because of space, because of the balance. And when you write literature review, some people do this. Take one paper and they write one paragraph. And then take another paper for the literature review. Write one sentence only. What is this? Why the first one got one paragraph, second one got only one sentence? Is it that the second one is not important? If it is not important, why it is in the literature really? Why it is in the reference? Throw it out. Right? It's not like, you know, if I write five lines for one paper, I should write five lines one. No. Not like exact, but reasonable, a balance. Okay? Five, three. Yeah. Balance. Very kind of very range. That should What's be the maximum and the, what is the minimum? There is no such thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it depends on the whole paper. Yeah. So you organize like one page for related work. One page. I uh, have ten papers to review. So I divide the page into ten parts. Okay, maybe divide into eight parts. No problem. Some will be more, some will be less. But there is balance. Okay? Not too big difference between them. I told you already about active voice, passive voice. Some like active voice, some like passive voice. No deal. Right? So, for example, the following theorem can now be proved. Some would say, no, this is very, it's very general. Think about it. When you write your paper, if you want to tell somebody, this is my work, this is somebody else's work. How to differentiate? We, we can now prove. So, means what? The author. We means author. Right? So, this is better. Active voice is re easier to read, okay? So, some country they like active, some like passive. By the way, the book like active here, in this book. Also understand, don't use these kind of words, okay? In a later chapter, we study what words not to use. There is a slide later on, okay? Not this chapter, another chapter. Perform, utilize, achieve, carried out, conducted, done, occurred, effective. These words we commonly use. What is the problem with these words? Let's try to understand. 
Tree structures can be utilized for dynamic storage of terms. Can be utilized. You can simply say terms can be stored in this. You are storing it, right? You don't need to say utilized and then dynamic storage. You can just say these are or can be stored. Local packet transmission was performed to test. So you can say error rates were tested. Why you are saying performed to test? Your actual verb, your actual action was testing. So just say test. Don't say perform to test. So perform, utilize, conducted, carried out, done, occurred. These kind of artificial words. Remove the words. Remove. Okay. Change. So when you write your your work, which I told you to write. First time you write normally, don't think anything. Then you say, oh, this is artificial, I remove this, I change. So you improve like this. Okay? So our own contribution, we use the word we. If somebody say like this, it is shown that the stable graphs are closed. Or it is hypothesized that. Look, who is saying this? Is it from my paper? It is from somebody else's paper. So it is better to use the word we. We mean the author. Don't say the word author, but I say we. This paper shows, this section argues. When you write this paper, it's confusing. What? In a literature review, in a literature review, related works uh, part, section, I write this paper. That was this paper. Means the actual paper you are writing or the paper you are referring to. Because you write a sentence about something and put Citation, okay? You put the reference, reference. Then you say this paper, this paper. That reference paper or your own paper? It's very unclear, right? Normally we write like this. Don't worry. When you start writing, we all make this mistake. I also make the mistake. Correct, correct, correct. We get the Okay? Sometimes using the word we is also wrong. I'll give you an example. When we conducted the experiment, it showed that our conjecture was correct. So he's saying, when I did the experiment, I got this writing. So it means, when Bandar do the experiment, you will get rightly, not rightly. So this means I'm not sure if Bandar do, you will get something. When I do something, no, don't do like this. Clear cut. The experiment showed that our conjecture was correct. Don't say, we got this. We got this means, Bukhari as the author, got it. Fine. But when Wali to do it, maybe no. Is that what you mean? Should not be like this, right? Make it clear. Okay. Then don't overdo anything. Don't put, you know, blush. We discussed already. Don't use buzz words. Don't make it like I'm the one who knows everything. Others don't know. No. This will go against you. Never do this. And sometimes people like to do this. They write some mathematic equation to make the paper look very complicated. And sometimes they make it like, you know, they write like this. Analysis of this method is, of course, a straightforward application of tensor calculation. Don't make remarks like this. Are you fooling people? What are you trying to do? They're trying to show you are big thing. Don't do this. And, for example, if you have a reference, which is not accessible, don't put it, not accessible, okay? Don't use references that does not exist, right? You are writing something in such a way, if a reader is dull, assuming the reader is a dull reader, still he should be interested, still he should follow what you are writing. So write it with clear mind, okay? As clear as possible. Then we have what is called obfuscation, okay? What is obfuscation? Basically, this is to make things in an ambiguous way. Right? It is like, you know, sometimes people write to life like this. Right? Ambiguous. Obfuscation. What is this? It will look as if, oh, it's very big. You want to make it look big. Okay? So, well, this is not deliberately done, but some people write, they are used to write in such a way, it looks big. But it is not. Look at an example here. Experiments with the improved version of the algorithm as we have described are the step that confirms our speculation that performance would improve. The previous version of the algorithm is rather slow on our test data and improvement leads to better performance. Look, improvement will always lead to performance, right? 
can I improve something? The government should improve. So this is what you call pathology. It is always true. Any improvement I do should improve my performance. If I do improvement and performance don't improve, do you call improvement? You do not call it as improvement, correct? Experiments are the step that confirms our speculation. But what is the use of it? You speculate, you think something. So what? What is your thinking got to do with the reader? It has nothing to do with the reader. Okay? So people have vague writing. Sometimes they write very vague. So be specific, don't exaggerate, don't omit relevant information. Here are some examples. Okay? There may be exemptions in some circumstances. What circumstances? When you say some circumstances, I as the author understand some circumstances something. You as a reader understand it as differently possible, right? So this is not clear. Amelioration can lead to large saving. What do you mean by large saving? How large is large? 10%, 20%, 100%? What is large? So be clear, amelioration lead to led to savings of 12 to 33%. Make it very specific. The status of the system is such that a number of components are now to be operated. So Components means what? Which components you are talking about? Okay? Be specific. In respect to the relative cost, the features of memory mean that with regard to systems today, this has greater associated expense. This is a long sentence. There is no punctuation to understand this. Make it very clear. Memory can be accessed more quickly than the disk. Make it straightforward. Make it easy to understand. Okay? And don't provide unnecessary detail, okay? Like for example, these graph guidelines are part of a process of seeking comments on the proposed stages for identifying officers. These are nothing to do. These are of no use for us. Don't put statements which are of no use for the reader. Sometimes people use analogy. Analogy means what? Kind of example, kind of some one thing look like another, okay? But when you write analogy, it is good. But sometimes I think analogy differently, you think differently. So people might think differently. Example, writing a program like building a model with connector blocks. If I write like this, you will think, what is connector block? What is the use of connector block in building? How is this got to relate with programming? programming. It confuses people. Okay? So it might take people out of the actual context. They will confuse everything. So be careful. And if you put very simple analogy, it can be easy to understand. Here is an example. Contrasting look ahead graph traversals with standard approaches, look ahead uses a bird's eye view of the neighborhood to avoid dead ends. It's much more simple example, bad view, finding dead ends, okay, but at significant cost. This is more clear. Okay. Similarly, don't make statements like uh, One-sided protocols are like signals in football. Maybe the reader don't understand football. Mm. What he will understand? He will understand nothing here if you say so. Okay? And there is something called strongman. What is strongman? They put this title just to brief you on. Alright? An indefensible hypothesis forced just for being demolished. So, you put some hypothesis, but it can never be proven. For example, it can be argued that database do not require indexes. If you don't have database with index, if there is no index in the database, okay, this is like you have a library where there is no catalog. There is no catalog, what's the use? I will spend hours searching every book to find what I need. No use, okay. And as the scale of data on web grows to billions of pages, search can no longer fight answers to question. If you put hypothesis like this, how you disprove? How we prove? Okay, there is no true false answer to it. Claiming against something that everyone knows to be untrue. So don't make things like something which is a false thing. You make it like true. Don't do this. Don't overclaim. Contrasting a new idea with a bad alternative. This is a problem. People propose idea. Compare this idea with something that was there some years ago. Ancient. Very old. Why you compare with the old one? Compare with something which is close to this, recent, proper alternative. 
Okay? Don't compare two things which are not related. Compare which are related. Okay? Don't compare something new with fictitious. You come up with some, you know, not so true stuff and you compare. Obviously, yours will look better. Okay? Don't do fictitious comparison. Here is an example. Korean languages have changed over the years. For the first database system, there were no Korean languages and records were retrieved from program. Before then, data was kept in this. This is all stuff. Okay? Some, since the inv invention of the internet, researchers have been using web to publish data. So what? Why are you comparing the old one? Okay, researchers working on current image generation initially failed to consider benefits of parallel processing. This is initial. This was in 1970. Don't compare that one with my current version. 1970 with 2016-18? No. Don't compare with old stuff, right? And we did not investigate partial interpretation because it is known to be ineffective. This is a statement you are making. But you never said because it is known. Known means what? Known to the author, known to the reader. Okay? You did not give a reason for it. You have to give a proper reason or give a citation, give a reference. Most users prefer the graphical style of interface. What is the reference? What is the preference? You have to give a reference. We believe that. Here he said we believe or he believes. Okay? Another possibility would be a disk based method. This, but this method approach is unlikely to be successful. This is a statement you are making, very bold statement. But you have to say it is better. Our experience suggests that. I feel so. I believe like this. My experience. Okay? And don't make something nonsense over generalization. Execution was almost instantaneous. Instantaneous means was in milliseconds, seconds, when? Quickly, quickly. How? Web is infinitely large. There is no limit to the possible efficiency gain. So these statements are not right. Okay? So then the author talks about reference and citation. When you refer something, okay, you have to show how his reference, his result is different from yours. Include references in proper format. For sure, you follow the format of the journal, all of the conference, what they want. Howard format, APA format, IEEE format, whatever format. You follow the format. References, you have to, when you put reference, this shows that my work is original. The author's work is original. This is number one. Because comparing the reference with mine. Number two, the author knows what is done in the area of research. Because I refer to the proper paper, the recent paper. Okay? And it gives you a proper background reading. So any reference I add in my paper should be useful to the reader. Only give reference to original paper. Not like a paper referring to another, a paper referring to another. Don't go for secondary reference. Okay? And give reference to journals most of the time, conferences. Don't give reference to email communication. Okay? These are not given high value. Okay? And what is common knowledge, don't cite them. Right? If you make any claim, have proof for it, right? Refer to your previous work. You can prefer, refer my old work. I have a paper in the same line, I can refer. But out of ten reference, six of them is referring to my own paper. That means I'm overdoing it. Don't overdo self-citation or self-refer. Okay? And whatever you write, be exact, be clear. Here is an example. Okay? If a paper refers to another paper, paper 1981 referring to 1959, 59 is not accessible, okay? Then what you do, you refer to that new paper, not the old paper, because old paper not accessible. So you can write, according to this guy, table graphs have been like this. Or you can say, according to this guy, as quoted by this guy, because I cannot access the first one, 1959, I cannot access so I say, this is quoted by this guy. I am not saying how it was written there. I don't know because I could not access the 1959 paper. Attribute results correctly. Put properly. Whose result is good one. Okay? And you have to write the results in your paper from the other paper fairly accurately. Here are some examples. If you use words like say, suggest, think, okay, you have to be careful. Here he says, Robinson's theory 
suggest that the cycle of this can be eliminated. But he did not perform experiments. How you know he did not perform experiments? You can say, did not report experiments. He did not report. Maybe he did. But in the paper, I didn't find. Okay? As yet, there is no experimental confirmation. You can write like this. But don't say he did not perform experiments. And don't say Robinson thinks that. What do you mean? You understand his thinking? No. You only see what is in the paper. Robinson has shown that. If you use the word shown, it means you agree with him. You already agree. Has argued that. If you say has argued, do you agree with him or not? You should write. Next sentence you should say you agree, disagree, why, why not? Okay? And when you take quotation, when you take something from a paper, if it is a smaller sentence, you can put it in quotes. If it's a bigger one, long one, you put it intended. You know, you put it inside the paper. Like some, some margin from the left, some margin from the right, put it in them. This is allowed. This way, you don't end up in plagiarism. Otherwise, you end up in plagiarism. Plagiarism is not allowed, as you know. Don't give anonymous reference, like this other work. What other work? Write the author name. Or write other work, person name correctly. Right? Self-references should not be anonymous. Don't write like Smith found this. Smith is writing the paper. In his old paper, he has something. So, Smith at all, we found. So, he is saying, Smith is our group. Okay? We found. Don't state something as true just because you think it is true. If you think it is true, doesn't mean it is true. Right? And please make sure you follow things properly. And references that are not discussed can be listed like this also. You can list like this. You can put something. This is coming from this reference. So here, I'm not writing in this paper, in that paper, this author name, he that is. I'm not writing this. I only put reference at the end. It's possible. Okay? And don't make unnecessary discussion. Like, several authors have considered the problem of unbounded delay. We cite, for example, why make a separate sentence? Put them, put their names in a bracket, and that will solve the problem. Okay? Just put them in a bracket. That will solve everything. You don't need to put a separate sentence. We died, for example. When you follow citation, always follow the need of the journal or the conference, whatever the publisher is. Okay? And you can use et all. If there are many papers, many authors, more than two, you can use et all. Please note there is a dot at the end of et all. You should use that dot. Don't remove it. Okay? So, over et all, provide another example. Because here there are one, two, three, four people. I make it into one person and say, at all. Okay? There is no and here. You say, over, at all. And when you write names, be consistent. If you write the first name and last name, everybody, same order. Okay? Same structure. So, follow standards. You have to follow standards when you write your references. When you do quotation, sometimes you can put them in double quote. I told you, sometimes in intended block. You can also use this, like this word SICK, S-I-C, in bracket, square bracket, S-I-C. This means there is some mistake. I got from some other paper, I am writing exactly, but there is a mistake here. So I put in bracket, square bracket, S-I-C, the word S-I-C. Please note, if it is a very simple typo mistake, don't put S-I-C. No need. Okay? So if there is something which is maybe for... Uh, you have a terminology, but used for something else purpose, you can use it. Look, if I do like this, Hamad and Queen, somebody, similarity is functionality, note that similarity is this, this, it's a long description. You can make it very short. Show that homology is functionality, functionally equivalent to identity. Make it simple. Okay? And if it is so short, if I'm using only this much from the paper, why not I just make it like Without the code, you can remove the code. Too short, that I don't need a code. If I'm getting one word, two words from a paper, you want me to put code everywhere, it will look very ugly. Okay? Don't put the code everywhere. There is what is called ellipsis. Ellipsis, exactly three dots. Don't put four, don't put two dots. It's only three dots. Exact. So, here, for text, not in the original. So, here I'm saying, 
this means I am adding something which is not in the original sanskrit okay and sometimes you, you are writing the ellipsis only in the square bracket so that it becomes easy for the reader to read okay and don't use ellipse at the starting of the sentence and the end of the sentence don't do that so let's say I am referring to some paper approach is simple then dot 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 fast and then dot 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 so you make too many dot 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 that really the quotation is gone because I added so many things in the quotation so why quotation means you should use as it is correct we are messing exactly now you add dot 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 what is this you change it so why not you write the sentence as a new sentence we read paraphrases put it differently okay and here are some last parts <coughs> If you have long quotation, you are using a figure, you are using some algorithm from a paper, you need permission from the publisher, okay? Permission from the author. From both people, you need permission. You cannot just copy his figure and then put it in your paper. Not allowed, okay? And like for example, this language has more power than the functional form, right? So if I say power, what do you mean by power? You need to define it carefully. Right. This language allows simpler expression of queries than this. So here, instead of the word power, he explained clearly what is power is. Sometimes they say, in their methodology, so you meaning their methodology is not good, so you are saying so-called methodology. It's like you are considering somebody as an insult. Don't insult somebody, okay? Not allowed in your paper. And when you write acknowledgement, Acknowledgement, somebody who did real scientific contribution to your paper, okay? So you should only have those uh, who, who had some contribution, not really scientific, but some contribution. You need to acknowledge the funding sources. You can specify what kind of support they gave you. If they have substantial contribution, consider them as an author, not as an acknowledgement person, okay? So you can say, I am grateful to so and so for fruitful discussion. You don't write in detail, I'm so and so good because he tell me, he helped me in section 3, proof 1, blah, blah, blah. Not details, okay? And don't write, I would like to thank. What do you mean, like to thank? I thank you, please. I thank. I'm grateful. Thanks to. Right? And don't change your opinion just facts. Don't plagiarize, even yourself. Don't plagiarize. Don't publish the same result in two places, in two papers. Mm. One result, why two places or two papers, okay? And what about the authorship? It is a sensitive issue. Who is the first author? Who is second author? Mm. The guy, the person who contributes most technically should be the first author. Okay? Need not be the supervisor, need not be the advisor, need not be like this. It should be the one who contributes who, who is, more, more, more work. More work, more contribution, okay? And make sure grammar is also important, there is also clarity. Clarity like this, don't split infinitive. So if we say, like for example, to write, to read, to go, in the middle, to go, to read, to write, this is called infinite, infinitive in English, okay? Don't write to diligently read, to boldly go, to happily write, okay? Don't confuse people with words like this, right? This is called splitting the infinity. Don't begin a sentence with and or but, you know. People don't like it, that's all. So, this is the last part here. Clear, simple is very important. If something is ill written, then it's going to be very tough for people to understand. So, simply in this chapter, the author has given you a go on the style. Important message, go style is not about grammar. Style is about clarity and an ambiguous nature. That's all in this chapter.